Hi, my name's Lee Matthews and I'm a physiotherapist and this is Pilates Rehab Relax. Uh, so don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel for all of our latest content. So today I've, I've brought along a friend, it's my gym ball. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to do a general workout set on the gym ball here and um, the one I've got here is 65 centimeters in diameter. I got it online. Um, you don't need to spend a fortune on it. You don't need to buy a big brand name, but just uh, go for a non-burst one. Uh, and what we're looking for, ideally, with your gym ball uh, is about 90 degrees at the angle of the hip and the knee. So this one's just a fraction too big for me, baby. But I'm 175 centimeters tall. And I would say that if you're shorter than that, you might want to go for the size down, which would be a 55 centimeter um, gym ball. If you're in any doubt about your sitting balance or not being stable enough to sit on it, please don't take any risks. Um, I've recorded this same routine just on a normal chair. And if you click above, you could even just stick to doing it on a chair to begin with and see how you feel with it. But if you think I can do this, I'm going to give it a go, then brilliant. Um, the, the first time you ever go on a gym ball, if you're in any uncertainty about it, then get the gym ball into a corner maybe. So like over here, for instance, I can put it into the corner. And then when I'm sat on this gym ball, what that means is that I can only go forwards. I can't fall sideways or backwards. If you're doing that okay, and that's not a problem, the next progression would be to have the ball up against a wall behind you. So again, if you've got that ball wedged into a wall, you can't move backwards, you can't fall backwards off of it. You've then got a bit of un in instability either side of you, and you can go forwards. So um, that would be two things to just start off with to, to get your confidence and to make sure you're nice and safe. So I would strongly advise doing it in a nice clear area, maybe remove any sharp objects like spiky plants, candles, or any sort of glass that might break. So this might look nice, but it's probably not the best environment for it. Uh, another top tip for beginners would be that, that this is quite unsteady to sit on. So the exercises will be easier if you've got your feet quite far apart there. So again, by making my legs the mat width apart there, I know that I've got a bigger base of support there. I've got more stability. And again, to make my exercises more challenging, what I can do is bring my feet in nice and close there. So if it's your first time, if you wanna go gentle, keep your feet you know, about mat width apart there. I am using an exercise mat here. The reason being that with my carpet, it's a little bit slippy. So safety comes first again, guys. So we're all familiar with the positions we use in Pilates. If there's any uncertainty with this, go and maybe have a look at the basics or go and do the five easy exercises on a gym ball to begin with again. I'll try and put a link up above there if I can. So. The first thing I want you to do, you sit on that gym ball, is let's practice doing a little bit of pelvic tilting. So we're going to roll back and forwards on our sitting bones. So what I can do, if I roll into a bit of a slouch there, I can rock back on the gym ball and then come in back up nice and straight and then poking my bottom out behind me and sat up to like a sergeant major. So let's just begin by doing four or five of those. This is a really good workout for our spine and for the muscles around our back. That's good. We do that for about five. It's kind of a nice warm up as well, isn't it? So I think we do one more just for luck. There you go, and back to our start position. Okay, well that was kind of a nice movement forwards and backwards. Let's try and do some circles now. So I don't mind which direction you're going, but let's just try and make either small or big circles, depending on how confident you feel. So again, by having your feet wide apart, you're gonna have a lot more steadiness there, more stable base of support. So you, you work to your ability. There you go. So when we've done about five in one direction, let's swap over 
and do the same in the opposite direction, yeah? So, there we go. About turn. So, I've got a few pops and creaks there myself. It's a really good way of challenging our sitting muscles, working our core muscles, and getting a little bit of exercise going on for a low back. There you go. And when you've done about five, back to the start position. Now, we've often talked about the principles of Pilates, so let's think again about having that nice lengthening of the spine. So as I'm sat here, I want my feet, you know, about hip width apart. Again, you, you go for what's safe for you. Um, I'm going to be thinking about nice wide collarbones and that lengthening of the neck, so no poking chins, nice and upright. And, um, and we're going to pop our hands just over where your belly button is and then move them just a little bit to either side. And now I went to cough for me, it's a big cough. <laughs> um, did you feel those muscles worked a little bit there? So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna practice engaging that core muscle, we're gonna zip up that tummy muscle. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna just draw that tummy back in towards the spine very slightly. So imagine you're drawing your tummy in, a bit like you're trying to do up a really tight pair of trousers that don't quite fit you anymore. So we just hold that and then relax. And we're looking for about a 60% contraction there. So if me really working hard is 100%, I just want about 60%. And we're gonna do that with all of the exercises through this routine today. So when I say let's zip up or engage that core muscle or draw your tummy in, it's that muscle around here that I'm looking for. I don't want you to just be holding your breath. It's specifically that muscle, that corset of muscle just around where the tummy button is that we're looking to get that engagement. Right, so we better, better use that muscle, haven't we now, we found it. So again, you can either have your feet nice and wide or in closer together if you want more of a challenge, but we're gonna start off with one of our favorites, which is the one leg stretch. And the way we can do this at a gentle level is just an ankle lift off of the the mat there. So I'm not even going to lift my whole foot off to begin with, just to make sure that you're safe and that you're okay, yeah? So we engage that muscle and I'm just looking to lift my heel off of the mat and then back down again. So should we do five on each side? That was one. That's good. Gonna test my counting ability now, aren't we? <laughs> 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 you're all gonna say you know what he's talking he's gonna forget to count you know what he's like but i have i've caught <laughs> i've managed to count the right to five my mum would be so proud of me there you go so that's five of the gentle level. Let's progress that a little bit, yeah? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna, again, make sure we're not nice and tall, make sure you're so tall that your head's skimming the top of the room there, yeah? Nice wide collar bones, engage that tummy. And now the progression to that is a very small lift of the foot off of the mat completely. So just stick with the other one if you're unsure of it, yeah? But if you're okay, what we can do, bring your weight over onto one leg. So if you bring your weight over onto your right leg, and then with your left leg, I want you to try and practice lifting that leg off of the ground. So you've lifted your left leg up slightly whilst the right remains down. Hold for a few seconds, keep that muscle engaged around your tummy, and then back down again. Should we do the same on the other side? So again, transfer your weight over to your left now, and then engage this muscle in your tummy, and lift that right foot off of the floor slightly, and try and Sit nice and tall, engage that muscle, and then back down again. Five on each side, there you goes. So you can have your hands resting on your hips, or on your lap, I really don't mind. But you engage the core, transfer your weight over to your right foot, and lift that left foot up off of the mat slightly. We can keep on going, shall we? So you work at your own pace, you know what you're doing. There you go. And when you've done five, 
you can bring yourself back to the start position again. So if that's really, really easy, the progression is to do it with your feet in nice and close to the middle. Again, you've just got to work with what suits you. I'll do two more. <laughs> there you go. So, we've mastered that without wobbling about too much. Let's progress on this. So, there's a couple of techniques we've done uh, using what we call the double leg stretch. It's actually a technique that involves our arm. So, um, it's adapted from Joseph Pilates' original techniques, and that's why it's called the double leg stretch. So I'm gonna bring my feet back nice and wide again, because we're gonna keep this nice and gentle. I'm gonna make sure I'm up nice and tall, engage that core muscle, and on an outward breath, I'm gonna lift both of my hands up towards the ceiling. So again, you work to any restrictions you've got. If you've got a bad shoulder, you might only do small lifts. If you've got no problems at all, you might go up all the way you might even only do it on one arm if you've got problems on one side and not on the other. So here we go. Engage the core and as we breathe in and out. So what we do as we go in, we take a big breath in, all the way straight up in front of you and then on the way out, it's like I'm drawing with two pieces of chalk the biggest circle I can possibly manage. There's two, let's do five of them. So again, and, and again. And again, the last one I do, I imagine that I've not got very good shoulders. So again, you work to what you can tolerate, yeah. And that was the double leg stretch. We're going to go back to uh, the legs again. I'm going to have my feet reasonably wide and we're going to progress our one leg stretch to one leg circle. So up nice and tall, engage your tummy muscle, transfer your weight onto your right leg. And then I want you to try and think about staying completely still as you lift your left leg off of the ground. Now the progression to this with the one leg stretch is making some circles. So again, imagine that you've got a glass of something balanced on your head. So that's, your body stays completely still as you make some circles there. So we do about five circles one way and then back down again. And remember which direction you did because we'll reverse that direction. So up we go again on the same leg. I'm making some circles going the other direction. Every time I look around, it actually makes me a little bit more wobbly. So it's challenging me well today as well. Again, about five, five circles and back down again. Right, let's do the same on the other leg. So if you bring your weight over to your left leg and engage your tummy muscles and lift your right leg off of the floor slightly. And again, remember which direction you're doing your circles in and Try and count to five if you can. That's good. And back down again. And then let's do the same in the opposite direction. So again, sit up nice and tall, draw that tummy in, engage the core muscle. And we're gonna do that one leg circle in the opposite direction. That's good. Should we do two more on each leg, yeah? So again, bring your weight back over to your right leg. Engage the core, lifting your left leg up. Five circles going in one direction. And back down, and the same again. So that little shift of our weight at the beginning gives us that stability there. And then we engage that core to keep ourselves in one position there. And back down again. One more time on the other leg, if that's all right. So shift your weight 
over towards your left leg, engage your tummy muscles, and let's lift the leg up. So you're lifting your right leg up. And again, imagine you've got a paintbrush on that knee and that you're trying to draw a perfect circle in front of you. And when you've done about five in one direction, then back down again, and then back up, and the same again, reversing the circle. Two, four, five. There you go. Right, so we've done a bit of legs. Should we go back to the arms again? So I want you to sit yourself up nice and tall. There we go. And we're going to imagine now that we're waiters in a really posh restaurant, yeah? So we're going to have two trays of drinks right in front of you, keeping those elbows at 90 degrees. And what I want you to do for me is to pass those drinks either side of you. So this is called the, the dumb waiter. And what we're going to do, we're going to bring those drinks on those trays either side of you. And this is a really good one for opening up the, the shoulders and working some of those muscles around the shoulder. So we hold that for a few seconds and then back in again. So again, if you fancy more difficulty, by all means, have those feet in a bit closer together and you'll find you get a bit more wobble going on. Maybe I don't need any more wobble going on. And back in again. And the same again. So we're gonna do five of those, that's two. And again. And one more time. Well, there's a progression to this and we're gonna do it in just a moment. So that was the Don Waiter. And the way we can progress that is something called the Cleopatra. So if you imagine that Cleopatra works in the same posh restaurant, she's a bit naughty she is. And what Cleopatra is going to do, when she goes to put those drinks out either side, she's going to pour them all over the floor. So let's do that, shall we? So we're going to start off out here and then bring those arms up and pour those drinks all over the floor, yeah? And then back in again. So out to the side and then pour those drinks on the floor, holding that position for a few seconds and then back in again. So we do five of those as well. And back in. Same again. There's loads of progressions with all these, but this is a nice gentle starting point with all of these. And um, if you think you can do it and you think, oh, it's a bit easy, then by all means feel free to progress. But I want this to be a really gentle progression for people. You know, don't rush in and, and, and hurt yourself or, or make yourself really sore. So that's Cleopatra. One of the other things we sometimes have done in mat work is a, is a technique called hundreds, which is bringing your arms down to the side and we can do that on a gym ball as well so you can have your feet nice and wide with this one or you can bring them in closer depending on how difficult you want it to be but what we're going to do now set up nice and tall bring your hands either side and i want you to imagine that you've got two big drums behind you two big drums just here and what we're going to do is we're going to bang those drums so engage your tummy muscles and we're going to do 25 very brisk pulses like you're banging two drums and relax again and give those arms a shake if you want to and we'll do the same again so again either with your feet in close or out wide I want you to try and briskly 25 in a row And relax. So they, they're called hundreds because we're going to do a hundred of them. So we've done two sets of 25. Let's do another two of these. So again, up nice and tall. Draw those tummy muscles in. And 
and this is a good exercise for keeping the bingo wings at bay and relax one more of those and then we're on to the next one so here we go <laughs> you're up nice and tall yeah i don't want any of you giving up now yeah <laughs> if i'm gonna do it i'm sure you can as well Um, relax. Well done guys, that's good. That wasn't that easy, was it? So um, the next one we're going to do is an arm opener and the easiest one we can do with that would be the, the bow and arrow. So again, you can start off with your feet nice and wide if you want to with this one. It's a nice safe position to be in. I want you to imagine that you're holding uh, an archer's bow. So shall we say that you've got the bow in your right hand and with your left hand, I want you to catch a hold of the string of that bow. Now you're set up nice and tall. I want you to engage your tummy muscles and on an outward breath, we're going to draw that bow string back with your left hand. So drawing that archer's bow all the way back. And can you see that as I go round, I follow the, the string of that bow with my nose and then release the string and back to the start position. So should we alternate from one side to the other, yeah? So now the bow's gonna be in your, in your left hand and with your right arm, drawing that bowstring back. So this is a really good exercise for opening the chest out, release that string, and the whole time we're doing this, we're engaging that muscle on the front of our tummy there. So again, the bow is now being held in your right arm and again, draw that back, bow string back and engage those tummy muscles. Draw that tummy button in, release the string and back to the start. So we're going to do five on each side, yeah? So again, you work at your pace. Don't forget to alternate between one side and the other and keep on going there. So I breathe out and back to the start. So you breathe out as you draw that bowstring back and then back to the start. And one last time on this side. That's good. There you go. So that was an arm opener and it was a nice gentle one, uh, which is the archer's bow. We're gonna now go on to doing another rotation movement, which is called a spine twist. So you can have your arms resting on your thighs, you can have your feet nice and wide apart, but what I'm looking to try and do is to rotate all the way around one way and hold for a few seconds, and then back to the middle, and then the same in the opposite direction. So, in its original form, the spine twist was done with your arms out in front of you. So if you cup hold of either of your elbows, like you're holding a baby, and um, bring your arms up nice and horizontal in front of you, sit up tall, and on an outward breath, let's rotate round to one side, hold for a few seconds, and as we do that outward breath, we squeeze and engage those core muscles again. So here we go. Engage the core, outward breath, and rotate to the opposite side. And then back to the start position. And we'll keep on going if that's all right. So here we go. Again, breathing out as we go. Good, and back to the start position again. So that was a spine twist. Well, we've got one last technique to do, you'll be pleased to know, and it's um, the half roll back. So I'm gonna have my feet nice and wide for this one. Again, if you're confident, you can always bring them in closer with later repetitions. People sometimes think they wanna get a strong tummy by doing things like the sit up, but you're far easier doing it with things like your hundreds and stuff like this. It's far more controlled. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sit myself up nice and tall. 
So here we go, up nice and tall. And what I want you to try and do for me is to roll back on your sitting bones. So I'm not slouching. What I'm looking for is if you just roll back on your sitting bones. And what you'll find at a certain point is that you start to engage these tummy muscles. Even, even I've got these tummy muscles and back up again. So you can imagine that you're trying to row a boat perhaps. And what I'm going to do, I sit up nice and tall and then I roll back and hold and you hopefully will feel these tummy muscles just doing a little bit of work there. Hold it for a few seconds and then back up again. And then the same again, yeah? Here we go. There might be a bit of trembling going on, hey? I don't know. And then back up, we do five, so that's two. Again, draw that tummy muscle in, yeah? Engage your core, back we go and hold and again and um, one last time yeah and that's it there you go well, well done guys. Um, how did you find that? <laughs> Hopefully that was all right, yeah? Um, so that was a uh, gym ball routine at a gentle level. Um, if you found it was easy, then if you click on one of the links up next, it will take you through the, um, the intermediate level. Um, but if you found it was a bit tough, then, then either stick with it or, or you can just go back and do it in a chair if that's all right. And again, there's another video with that if you fancy looking at it. So, um, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you want to keep in touch with all of our latest content and um, thanks for coming along. See you soon.